Baird to join the growing call for ordinary citizens to take action. You know, the scientists have done their work. It's now time for governments to, uh, to do their work. Uh, it's time for Canadians to also accept their responsibilities. For years, skeptics, including some in Canada, said the proof wasn't there, that the science was shaky. Well, not anymore. Climate change is becoming more obvious, the evidence growing clearer by the day. For the first time, the world's top climatologists concur. There's a 90% likelihood global warming is man-made. If it's not stopped, temperatures will rise as much as 4 degrees by the end of the century. Ice caps will melt and oceans will rise as much as 43 centimeters. Canada will be hit especially hard. Already, our polar bears are threatened. And winters, say the experts, are arriving six days later than a century ago, meaning we'd better get used to the wacky weather. As for the Prime Minister's solution, dramatic lifestyle changes for Canadians, unlikely. The answer will be better technology. I don't think realistically we can tell Canadians, stop driving your car, stop going to work, turn the heat off in the winter. This was just the first of several key reports this year on climate change. Despite today's dire warnings, scientists will publish a list of recommendations in the spring with possible solutions for the world to fight global warming. Tara. All right, Stuart Greer in Paris tonight. Thank you. That UN report providing the most comprehensive and up-to-date data on climate change, showing 11 of the past 12 years have been the warmest since official record-keeping began. Something scientists now agree is no coincidence. That Canadian Arctic sea ice has already shrunk 3% in the past 30 years, impacting many species. And most sobering, the damage already done is so severe that the effects will be felt for at least 1,000 years unless dramatic action is now taken. Environment Minister John Baird is in France for that climate change summit and he heard the panel's findings firsthand. He joins us now from Paris. Minister Baird, this report is being called unequivocal proof of human impact on climate change. After hearing that, are you still as opposed to meeting the emission cutting targets of the Kyoto guidelines? Well, when you see 300 world eminent scientists gather and use the word unequivocal, it's quite something. It's unequivocal that the world is warming, and even just since 2001, the last report, it's now very likely more than 90% chance that it's been caused and contributed by human activity. So does that mean you would reevaluate Kyoto goals? Yeah. I think Kyoto is all about global action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions abroad and in Canada. Uh, I guess our big objection would be spending five or ten billion dollars of Canadian taxpayers' money on hot air credits in Russia where no greenhouse gases would be reduced. But that doesn't absolve ourselves from our responsibility in Canada to do our part in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. You know, many scientists would argue the Kyoto targets are even too low and the Conservative targets are nowhere near Kyoto. So if you're not reevaluating Kyoto, are you at least reevaluating the Conservative plan and accepting? that it may not go far enough fast enough. Well, Canadians want to see real action uh, and we're uh, really committed to that industrial regulation. That'll be the first major step that Canada can take. Uh, Canadians have seen enough studies, they've seen enough reports. What they want to see is real action from our government. They want all members of parliament of all political parties to work together to get the Clean Air Act passed, uh, which is, like I said, the first uh, attempt to regulate industry uh, in this country. The international community has really slammed Canada for not meeting Kyoto obligations. So how do you now persuade the world that Canada gets it? Well, you know, Kyoto was a 15-year marathon to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And when Stefan Dion and the Liberals were there, when that starter's pistol went off on that 15-year marathon, they began running in the opposite direction. So I think we can demonstrate to Canadians that we're serious uh, by regulating industry for the first time in Canadian history, by getting serious on alternative energy, uh, by doing more in public transit. That's why our ta tax credit for people who use public transit is so important. So we want to see is a lot of action in the very short term that will yield to uh, a real concrete plan to, uh, to address this problem in Canada. Uh, we can't lecture people in the other parts of the world when we're not accepting our own responsibilities. Okay, Minister Baird, thank you for joining us. Back on this side of the Atlantic, one of the most visible Canadian environmentalists, David Suzuki, saying the report is actually too conservative in estimating the impact of global warming. Suzuki also saying it's time for Ottawa to stop bickering and do something. Well, I think personally that we should react as if we were attacked by the Japanese at Pearl Harbor. This is not something we can continue to, to it, look at, look at uh, the question period in, in Ottawa today. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace on all sides of the... We've got to get on with setting 
the targets and enacting the legislation and not indulging in this you're at fault you didn't do anything no you don't you know i mean and this is what i feel canadians are sick and tired of this Suzuki is on a cross-Canada tour focusing on the environment. In Ontario, another powerful reminder of the kind of extreme weather warnings coming from today's climate report. Highway 401, about an hour east of Toronto, is finally reopened in both directions, more than a day after whiteout conditions caused a massive pileup. The westbound lanes of Canada's busiest highway reopening first this morning, after work crews brought in heavy machinery and then worked through the night to remove the wrecked vehicles and repair the highway. It suffered heavy damage when a tanker truck burst into flames. Two people were killed and 12 others injured in yesterday's 30 vehicle pileup. And in Florida, more extreme weather. Even in a state used to powerful hurricanes, the violence of electrical storms overnight that apparently spun off tornadoes coming as a shock, leaving at least 19 dead around Orlando and a devastating trail of smashed homes. The region is now under a state of emergency. Here's Jess Joe Hall. The devastation goes on for miles. Throughout South Florida today, you could see the impact of the tornado and the catastrophic destruction of homes, businesses and vehicles it left behind. Many neighborhoods in the storm's path look like war zones. I heard the noise. Sound like a freight train coming. Many here realize they're fortunate to be alive. If I didn't hear the noise, but the roof fell in on me, and that's what woke me up. But we're lucky to be alive. The storm hit overnight when most people were sleeping, unaware a tornado was coming. Sirens were set off by the weather service to alert the public, but only 15 minutes before the tornado touched down. Yeah. No, there was no warning. I mean, my sister heard something fly through her bedroom, and she thought Mom was gone. She had to go through the trailer, and she couldn't find her. And Surprisingly enough, mostly everybody's okay. Yep, that used to be a mobile home, and that's where we were. That's what we were in. Today, authorities declared a state of emergency as rescue teams fanned out to search for survivors trapped under flattened homes. Our priority today is search and rescue. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, anybody who's in the affected area. Um, that we make sure we get them out, we get them out safely. Uh, local officials, firefighters are doing that as we speak. Authorities believe up to 500 structures are either damaged or destroyed by the storm. At its peak, the tornado blew over five tractor trailer rigs on the interstate highway, just north of Florida's key tourism region of Orlando. No Canadians are believed to be killed or injured. While the worst may be over, recovery for many will take years. In Vancouver, this is the Global Nationals Jazz Johal reporting.